All right, guys, so we got a batch of servers last week, and I've been working through a first couple of them just to check them out, make sure everything was okay. They are perfect, but what happens if you acquire a server secondhand and it hasn't been reset, and you need to reconfigure all of the BIOS, all of the options, and let's say it hasn't been updated since 2015? Let me show you guys how to do that. Come on. Okay, so first and foremost, here's what we're looking at. This is one of the 380s. I've already got a couple of drives in it and it has been completely updated. I've got another 360 up here with a couple of drives I've been through. I wanted to go through one of each of the 380s and 360s just to make sure that they were legit and they were good. And no surprise, uh, they actually were. So I put another 360 in here. This is one of the 16 terabyte models that I told you guys about. Remember, we got seven of them. Two of them had 16 gigs of RAM, the others had 64. So I want a good PF Sense box out of one of these. So I got some eight genuine HP certified drives in the actual caddies to, uh, to put in here. Pop those bad boys in real quick. And then we're gonna boot into the BIOS. A little knot right there, you just pop it. Right? I've only, I'm only running one power supply right now, so it's probably gonna be upset about that. But uh, the other thing that I didn't have, it was a surprise, was a VGA cable. <laughs> Who knew you still needed a VGA cable? All right, so let's boot this guy up and see what happens. Before we do, you can see that it's got the orange blinking light going on. That's because I've only got one of the power supplies uh, plugged in right now. We're gonna go into the BIOS and set that so that it's an active passive configuration. But push the power button, she's gonna fire up. And you see the lights on the drives work, HP certified, all that good stuff. So no compatibility issues there. And then we're gonna jump up here to a little monitor that I've got stuck in the rack here. Funny story, I did not have a VGA cable. <laughs> so I had to order a VGA cable to be able to, uh, to console into these directly. But the good news is the beauty of ILO, I'll go over this while, we're, while this is booting up. The beauty of ILO is that once I get ILO set up, I'm literally never going to have to do this again. There's a remote console. The latest versions have HTML5. It operates as a float directly in your browser. So you literally, you can run a Java applet. You can do all kinds of different ways to remote console, even when it's powered off, right? So I'll show you guys how all that stuff works. We're gonna update all the BIOS. We're going to update ILO itself. We're gonna push firmware, all kinds of good stuff. So we're about done with the boot up here and we're gonna kick over to a, another sort of GUI screen. Uh, that's kind of the HP ProLiant startup. And you'll see a few different things on this screen that are important. If you're doing like a first time setup of your, of your HP server, you're gonna see some boot options down at the bottom. F9 for to get into the BIOS setup and F11 for one-time boot options and things like that. Uh, you'll see that there's an ILO IPv4 assigned static uh, on some random network. Uh, that's because none of this was reset uh, when it before it was sold at auction. Bad, bad, bad. You should always reset your configs back to factory defaults everywhere. Um, so this, the reason I can't use this this way is because they had HV1, HP1 view, they had the ILO advanced license. So there you go, two E5 2637 V2s. Uh, everything's checking out great. And you'll see the ILO for advanced press F8 to configure, right? Real easy here. We can go through the individual settings. There's not much to configure in here, right? But what we want, because it's a static IP address, it's not pulling uh, an IP of my network and my range off of DHCP. That's the main thing we need it to do. We can, we can go in and update host names and all that stuff, but primarily we just want to reset uh, all of the things back to factory defaults, all right? And that's it. It's gonna reset ILO and then it's gonna continue its boot. So just give it a few seconds here. I wanted to do this in real time for you guys, just for uh, for this one time. I've got to do this 10 times. This is the third time. <laughs> so bear with me, uh, th just let this play out. Uh, it takes about 20 seconds maybe. Um, but while we're doing this, I can, or while it's doing this, I can tell you about how uh, you can do all of this in a web browser now. Um, you can even reset the configuration from the browser, I believe. So I just got a notification that a new device from Hewlett Packard Enterprise uh, has joined my, my network because it gave it an IP address. 
right? And there we go. It's sitting there at the boot. We can escape the config and then it's gonna try to pixie boot and all of that good stuff. So now that we're there, we can, we can basically, um, we need to see what IP address it gave the server, but I'm gonna go find that and I'll meet you guys back over at the computer. Last quick note before we jump into anything. Um, when you reset your ILO, it resets it to a factory default password again. Now, those of you that have managed HP servers before know this, but every one of them has these little, what we call toe tags that pulls out and gives you serial numbers and stuff like that, right? On the back of it, however, underneath, which means you gotta go in some weird, funky kind of position because they don't bend up or anything. I'm gonna take a picture of it, take it back to the desk. The default factory ILO password and account is on the underside of these little toe tags. So just a heads up for when you reset it, that's where you get the password. It's not admin, admin or anything like that. All right, guys, so we're back over at my workstation now, and I actually powered the server back off to prove a point to show you guys something uh, that you can still get into ILO even when the servers are powered off and make changes and make saves and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I went on my router. I pulled off the IP address that it was served via DHCP. It was this 182 address, and we'll pull it up. We'll get the certif certificate warnings. That's fine, and we'll be brought to a login prompt, right? Now let me, I had to get underneath it with my phone and take a picture of it so that I can pull it up here. W-T-H-R-P-6-W-9. I don't care that you guys know that. It's the first thing we're gonna change. We'll log in and voila, just like that, we are in ILO. I'm actually gonna make that a little bigger so you guys can see it there. All right, so I'm just in a browser on my workstation on the same network. As long as all those conditions are met, you should have no problem here. You can see that it has not been updated since 2015. The BIOS is still a 2015 BIOS. We're gonna fix that. The ILO version is from 2017. We're gonna fix that. I believe the latest one for ILO 4 is 2019. We're gonna fix all of that. Um, but we need to go into uh, da, 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 administration, user administration, right? The very first, remember the server's powered off, guys. That's the key thing to take away here. So I am going to create a new user. We're gonna do a little data center dude, uh, same thing. And then we'll put our actual right password in here. And from now on, we'll be using that. So now we can add, well, so oh, we gotta add permissions. So just select all, create your your own default admin account. And that way at least the log, it can be logged and tracked and all of that kind of stuff, right? Uh, let's see, what do we wanna do? Network, let's go to the dedicated port. We can see here some various information. We've got MAC addresses and IPv6 and all that stuff. Uh, the main thing I wanna do is go in and change this to ILO DCD uh, I think it was doing 360 O. No, this is going to be our PF Sense rig. So I can come back and change this, but it's fine. Whatever. It's fine. They're pending changes. Again, won't do it until you re reboot the computer. Same with the, uh, when you reset the ILO to the defaults, it requires a reboot in order to process those defaults back into the interface. So make sure you reboot the server. Don't forget about that. Mostly any, ch or you can just reset it from right here, right? I'm not going to do that yet uh, because we got some other little changes to make. And we're going to upgrade, update some software while we're in here, right? Here is where you can get into the remote console, right? The newer versions have even cooler stuff that you can do. So I'm going to show you guys with the uh, Java console here with the web start. Basically, you download a JL, JLNP, JP, I don't remember what the extension is, uh, that you, is basically a plugin that goes into a JRE, a runtime environment, right? So it gives you full console access, right? Um, let's go back down to administration. Let's go to firmware. And the first thing we want to do um, is update ILO itself, right? So we want to make sure we've got that going. Um, what I also recommend people to do is, let me make sure I can show you this. Yep, that's fine. Uh, I recommend people grab, make a folder and just dump all of your software downloads, your firmware updates, all of that kind of stuff into a single folder. And you can see I've got all of the 360 and 380 because some of it's different. The BIOSes are a little different, right? Hardware platforms kind of different. So you're going to have different drivers and all that kind of stuff. The big thing uh, that I want, the thing that makes this easy, frankly, is the serve, what they call SPPs, Service Pack Per Liant. So grab the latest SPP or Service Pack Per Liant for the Generation 8s. It's uh, 8.1, I believe. 
Uh, so grab that and you'll be able to do something really cool that I'm going to show you here in just a minute. What if I told you that we could actually mount ISOs as virtual media for the server to boot off of from ILO? <gasps> Oh my God, it's crazy, right? So let's go into virtual media, right? We're going to go in here and we're going to give it a second to load up. Uh, oh yeah, we got to put that in first. Timeout, we'll be right back. Okay, got that done. You can see on the screen, we've got our advanced license in now. So now we can do virtual media. Just as that was, that was a nice catch, by the way, to have right in the middle of the video. When you're resetting this, it also resets your licenses. So if you have an existing server that you don't want to lose your licenses on, make sure you've got those written down. They're like activation keys, like five, five octet activation keys. You can see it up here. It's not showing you anything, but whatever. Now we can go back to virtual media. So just wanted to show you this as a screen so you can do it. I'm going to show you a cooler way to do it uh, when you're actually booting the server up from the console all right hold that thought for one second uh, remote support is really cool there's some other things in here that we can do such as access we can limit who has access to what and during what times and over what ports there is an insane amount of control for server administration in ILO you can even take this and federate it uh, where is the setting for federation right here? You can even federate it across systems if you've got something like one view or green lake or any of that kind of stuff, right? You have the ability to to do all of that stuff uh, down here in the bottom, right? You see we've got indicators. Uh, I've got a health degraded because I've got a power supply that I haven't really set in the BIOS correctly just yet. We'll fix that problem. Uh, but the idea here is to basically get this up and running. So I want to show you guys the remote console, right? We're going to pull that up, let it load for a second. And there it is. All right. So now we can do web start. We're going to download the JNLP file. Just throw it on my desktop uh, and we'll call this ILO PF sense. We're only going to need this one time until we update stuff. Okay. So bear with me here as we do it. You can see I did it for the 360 and the other 380 that I told you that we were, uh, we were updating. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just open that and it's going to give me the old Java prompts. Yes. I want to run it. Of course I accept yada, 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 remote execution, Java, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Right. So now if you look here at the top across the menus, apologize for the small font. I'm on a big monitor here. Uh, virtual drives, you've got the power switch, you can momentary press it to turn the server on, right? It's all digital. Uh, virtual drives, you can do a removable media image, you can do a USB key, you can even mount from a URL. So if you have an update server with, with stuff like that on it, you can put a URL in there. We're going to use image file, right? So the very first thing I want to update is the service pack ProLiant, right? So I'll open that and then I'm going to do power switch momentary press. And she's booting up. I didn't leave the desk. There were no edits, no cuts. There we go. And there she's booting up, right? Now you can hear the fans going. So we'll give this a second to boot back up because I really want to step you guys through how to, how to go about this. The service pack is cool because it's basically saves you a whole bunch of time and headaches for uh, being able to update your server. All of the firmware, we'll have to do the BIOS itself separately, but we'll do that one next. And then we're going to update ILO and then we're going to configure a few extra things in ILO. Okay. So we'll speed this up a little bit to, to move it along. All right, jumping back in here, you can see F9, F10, F11 at the bottom for the boot menu. I always hit F11. More than likely, it would boot off of the ISO select uh, successfully. I always like to just be sure and be able to have that selection option just in case I wanted to change something at the last minute. You don't have to wait another five minutes for the server to boot back up, all of that stuff. So I, I advise hitting F11 just to be sure of what you've got access to. And there we have it, guys. We are at the boot menu. Um, it had nothing to do specifically with what we're doing, but this is what you would see every time if you're trying to boot from CD, boot from floppy, floppy, <laughs> boot from USB or ISO, right? Uh, so right now, technically, we have a CD-ROM in. We have virtually mounted an ISO. So we're going to hit option one here, right? Now it's going to come into the SPP installation. We're just going to do automatic. Let it do automatic, 
That's my advice. And I'm not going to make you sit here and watch us install drivers the whole time. We're just going to speed this up about 800% and blow through it for you guys. But you get to see the process through uh, end to end. All right, so it has figured out that this is a 360p. This is not specific to any of them. It's specific to the generation eight uh, uh, generation of a Perliant servers. So as long as you've got a 360, a 380, a 580, whatever part of generation eight, uh, you should be good to go with this one service pack. And that's kind of the beauty of it. You have one file to do all of your updates. So whether you got this, uh, whether you're repurposing a server that you already had, whether you got this off of an auction of some kind, like wherever you got it from, maybe a friend's giving it to you after they clean out their data center. Who knows? Make sure you grab the SPP that's out there for uh, whatever generation of servers that you have, right? You can see we're doing inventory. It's, it's inventorying all the components that are installed in it. So it's looking at the network cards. It's looking at the RAM. It's looking at the other drivers that might be on the system. So it's making sure that it's got, it's going to install only the things that you have installed in your system. So we'll let this finish. We'll speed this back up and uh, we'll see you guys on the flip side. And there we go. And the server powered off. And I'm not sure it will turn back on. I don't remember what it does. I think it turns itself back on in, in a couple seconds. Yep, there it comes. So now that it's gonna boot back up, we'll see that here on the console. Uh, we've got all of our service pack in, uh, service pack per line installed. We still have to update the BIOS though. If you look at the top of the screen, it's still P71 from July of 2015. Woo, hello Screamy. I think it's recalibrating the fans as part of the service pack firmware update. Um, but it will go through a lot of these kind of first time boot up stuff when that firmware gets updated, but it'll settle back down uh, in just a second. So while that's doing that, I'm going to take the console off the screen here and we're going to go back down to firmware and we're going to look at our ILO uh, edition of, from August of 2017, version 2.55. Now, remember I had my folder with all my stuff in it? So you can see uh, if I've got ILO firmware, ILO 4 firmware, there's a couple of different ones. I found that finally found the latest one, 1851874 is kind of what you're looking for, for a generation eight ILO 4 installation. So they come in executables. Well, we're not running Windows, right? What you can do is use a tool like 7-Zip or WinRAR or any of those and just extract it because it is just a, uh, a thing. I already did the extraction, so you'll see a series of files inside of here, right? You can also do this booting it off of a USB key, right? But since we're doing it through the ILO interface, we just want the bin file, right? ILO 4 two, version 281 bin file, all right? So we'll come over here and we'll do choose file under administration firmware. This is specifically for ILO and we'll choose that bin file and we'll hit open and we hit upload and we say, okay, and it's going to go off and update the firm, update the version of ILO. To, I believe it's in 2019 is the latest iteration of ILO 4. We'll give that a few seconds. Again, speed this up in post so you guys don't have to sit and watch it. Now down here at the bottom, you can see a flash progress indicator, 2%. Now the first 10 to 15% moves really slow and then it just blazes right past it. What it's doing is it's qualifying it right now. It's checking the secure signature of the file against you know any you know checksum that might be out there for the software. But yeah, let's go. All right, and now it's flashing the firmware image. So it checked out. Secure digital signature worked out, and now we're actually flashing it. I think I'm actually going to close our remote console for now, just in case, because that is part of ILO. I want to make sure there's no, no conflicts there. We'll reopen it, or I'm going to show you the new way that you can use the console once we get into the new version of ILO here in just a minute. All right, so as it's finishing up here, just one more reminder across the top. Look at the date. Look at the version number. I believe the updated version number is 2.81. And we'll have to check on that in just a second. So 
this is going to take a couple minutes for it to reset. We'll come back when it's when it's finished. All right, we're back, and uh, we're going to log back in using my credentials this time that we created uh, previously. And uh, let's go. What do we got? Oh, it is 2022. I forgot. I thought it was 2019. There we go, guys. Uh, if we go in, we can see July 2022, just a f six, eight months ago. Uh, the latest version is 2.81. Uh, it's good to hear that they're still updating ILO 4, even though they've moved on to ILO 5, which is really, really fantastic, uh, the little bit that I've seen of it. But if we go into Remote Console now, <gasps> there's a new option in here. Oh, my God. HTML instant because it's HTML5. Now you have instant access to your console, right? So I can send a control alt delete from the console here and it's going to reboot the server. Ah! Now, a couple of other fun things that we can do. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys uh, boot up and version numbers and all of that stuff, but we don't need to watch all of that. We can just click out of that. Now, that isn't a window that you can move out of the browser. So if you've got multiple monitors and you want to be able to drag the console away from the top of the browser like that, maybe keep running the JRE one so you can keep it on a separate window. That's totally up to you, depending on your preference. Me personally, I, I like just working in, ILO, in in the browser, right? Okay, so we've got our licenses installed. We've got ILO updated. We deployed the service pack per client package of all of our updated firmware, but we've got one thing left to do, and that's to update the system BIOS itself, or more commonly known as the system ROM in the HP world. There's several different ways you can go about this. You can use the virtual media thing if you've got an ISO, which it's not delivered as an ISO. It's delivered as a kind of an extractable, executable file. So you can either extract that and grab the bin file out of it and put that on a thumb drive somehow. Nah. I told you guys, we don't, we're not even going to have to walk over to the server anymore. We're just going to go back to firmware because it's not just about the ILO firmware. You can also update the system ROM. All right. So we're going to browse to our file. Uh, we're going to go back to the HP servers. And you can see that there are two BIOS files. I've got one for the 380 and one for the 360. Now, you can just extract these, right? You can either double click on them and extract files that way or just use a WinRAR or 7-Zip or something along those lines to, uh, to extract them out. I already did that, and so for the three, you have to keep track of the numbers, though, because the BIOSes are different. If you're familiar with HP stuff, they use the SP5 number numbering system. So this is a 360, so we want the 439 BIOS. I've already extracted it into here, and you see you get a set of files. The file you're looking for if you're updating through ILO is in the flat files folder, and it's the CPQ with the numbers, 6B8, whatever that is, right? So we're going to click Open. We're going to click Upload, and we're going to click OK. And it's going to upload the firmware. And you can go make a sandwich for 10 minutes. But we'll, we'll speed this up again so you guys don't have to watch progress meters. And I think we're done. So if we go back to Overview, we can see that we are still on the current 2015 system ROM, right? So what we need to do now is reboot the system. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. We're just going to jump into the HTML5 console. And that's what I was expecting to see. All right, so we've got a reset old girl here. Give it a control alt delete. See if that'll get it done. Hmm, not getting it done. I'm love that this happened, right? Uh, ideally, you don't want to do this while the server's running. You would want to boot into that, but we can do a little, little reset. Oh, look at that, P71 2019. And there we have it, guys. Uploading one little file into ILO. I literally just updated this entire thing in the span of 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. The, the length of this video, however long it's taken, with the speed-ups and all of that good stuff. But, I mean, there you go. At the end of the day, that's really what <laughs> what's going on here. Uh, ILO is amazing. If you have HP servers, or if you're looking for servers and looking for a reason to get HP servers... Um, that's why I love the ProLiance. Before I ever joined NetApp, I was a HP diehard fanboy for the ProLiant line. And I will even date myself and say some of the first servers I worked on were the white pizza box compact ProLiant servers of the late 90s before the acquisition 
uh, by HP. So I have been a ProLiant fan for a long time. I've been using these servers and this software for a long time, 20 plus years at this point, good lord. Uh, but there is no better way to remote manage servers out there than what HP has with ILO. And now the things that they've got coming with, or what we've had with OneView in recent years, and now with GreenLake, remote server management from the cloud, looks incredible. I can't wait to play with that stuff on here with you guys and kind of remote manage all of my servers through GreenLake. That's going to be a fun video down the road, right? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, that's how we do it. Now I just got to go do this six, seven more times. But until then, take care. Advanced licenses and HP One View and all sorts of configurations uh, as part of it. So I don't have any of that stuff. So you can see it doing the smart array. Here comes the option ROMs and press F8 to configure. Did I press it? Oh, I didn't move the keyboard. 